All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Grace Foy, and I am an associate director in the Career Center. And I have the wonderful opportunity to help with the university side of things for Vandy and Hollywood. Um, we have the privilege of having both Rich Hull and Chad Gervich here with us. And um, it's really an honor to have them and their time for this. So please take advantage of it. They're gonna be talking about the program, the application, and, and feel free to ask questions. You can do that by um, taking yourself off mute or if it's more um, comfortable for you to do the chat box, that's fine too. So I will start, Chad and Rich, if you both wanna take like two or three minutes just to tell our audience about yourselves and what you do in Hollywood. Um, okay, I guess I'll, I'll kick us off. Um, I feel like Lauren gets the award for the best background with that uh, sky above you. And then Rachel gets the award for the like, I can't believe they haven't redone the library since I was there. Like, look how old school in the background, it's really crazy. Um, so uh, I'm Rich Hall. Uh, Chad and I started this program 15 years ago. Uh, I uh, grew up in Texas. Texas. I went to Vanderbilt. I got out and came to LA pretty quickly after that. And uh, I'm a, um, uh, I, I spent most of my career as a film and television producer and probably did 25 or 30 different movies and TV shows. Uh, and then about five or six years ago, I started um, a uh, streaming service for the Latin market, which is now the largest in the world uh, and was recently acquired by Univision, which is also the largest um, uh, television network for Hispanics in the U.S. Uh, so now I am, as I was telling Grace when some of you guys were just joining, I'm now everything I said I would never be, which is a senior executive at a large media company. And I'm stuck here for the next year or so, but uh, once I can get out, I'll go back to producing movies probably. Um, but nonetheless, Chad, you want to uh, tell a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, hey, guys. Um... My name's Chad, and uh, I am a TV writer and producer here in Los Angeles. Um, I came out to LA right after I graduated from Vanderbilt, which was a few years after Rich. He is way older than I am, like a lot older than I am. Um, I, I, I came, Rich is shaking his head, but he knows that it's true. Um, I came out here, I went to grad school at UCLA and work now as a TV comedy uh, writer and producer. Um, I have done everything from uh, sitcoms to I do a lot of late night stuff. I do some game shows. Um, right now I'm working. I have a, a sitcom uh, pilot in development at ABC and um, a new game show that just started on TV Sunday night on Fox called Cherry's Wild. Um, I know none of you have seen it because it premiered Sunday night and nobody saw it. Um, so definitely tune in this Sunday night. Um, it's a fun game show. And uh, I'm starting work on a new show for Hulu next week. Um, there you go. Awesome, thank you both. So the way I thought we'd do this is I'm just gonna ask you all some questions. And if you both wanna um, add some input or if one of you wanna take it, and then we'll have definitely have some time for student questions as well. But to get us started, you know, Vandy and Hollywood is a summer internship program. This year, of course, we are transitioning, transitioning to a virtual format. But if you will just tell us a little bit about what the what makes the program so great and why students should do it. Sure, I'll I'll I'll, I'll jump in and then hand off to Rich. Um, you guys, I think one of the things that makes the Vandy and Hollywood program really special is, you know, there are lots of internships in Hollywood and lots of internship programs and lots of um, schools that have summer in LA or semester in LA programs. And um, some of those are bigger programs than ours. Some of those are smaller programs than ours. Um, but I think one of the things that makes our program really special is we do a really good job of using our alumni network to find or even create internships in Hollywood that are exclusive just to you guys. Um, we have so many alumni out here 
that we, you know, we, we call that we we're in touch with and we say, hey, we've got a new batch of students coming out here this summer. And they say, great, you know what, we will hold a spot for one of them, or we'll hold a spot for two of them, or we've got three spots, we can't, um, you, you know, we have three internship spots, send us the Vandy students first, we'll put them at the top of the pile. Um, and so we love using our alumni network that way. And it creates opportunities for you guys that aren't always available to other students and other schools. And even though Vanderbilt is, you know, if I'm being honest, even though I think Vanderbilt's Hollywood presence is smaller than some schools, I mean, there are some schools that have enormous Hollywood footprints, um, you know, like, like Emerson and Northwestern and Columbia College Chicago, um, NYU, you know, those schools have, at USC and UCLA, those schools have huge presences in Hollywood. Um, Vanderbilt's not as big, but our alumni network, maybe because it's smaller and kind of cozier, tends to be more, um, I don't know if intimate is the right word, but kind of enthusiastic and concentrated. And so the Vandy alumni who are out here love, love, love helping the students that are coming out. And one of the things that Rich and I have, and Grace obviously, have seen happen over the last few years that honestly I think is the most exciting part of Vandy and Hollywood is that the students who came out here for Vandy and Hollywood internships a few years ago are now working in Hollywood and hiring you guys as their interns. One of my favorite stories, um, just quickly, is years ago, it would have been, oh my God, probably over 10 years ago now, I was writing on a TV show for Fox and hired a woman, um, a student named Grace, Grace, named Stacy Greenberg as the intern on our show. And she was fantastic. And Stacy came out here after she had interned, after she had graduated from Vandy, came out here and got a job as an assistant at Imagine, which is Ron Howard's production company. And after working as an assistant for a few years, she became an executive there. And then she became a VP there. And she hired a Vandy intern named Erica Batty. And Erica Batty was Stacy's intern at Imagine. And then Stacy moved on. And then Erica moved on to write for an Imagine TV show. And to me, that is exactly how Van Vandy and Hollywood is meant to work. Alumni helping you guys, but then you guys come out and get jobs in Hollywood and just hand it back to other Vandy students who want to come out and it just creates a cycle. And um, Rich, chime in. But to me, that's what makes Vandy and Hollywood special and unique. That's what makes it Yeah, special. I mean, you know, the, the crazy part is it didn't used to be that way. So the original concept of the Vandy and Hollywood Summer Internship Program is that it created a bridge between Vanderbilt and Hollywood that didn't exist when Chad and I were there. Um, because one of the best things you can learn when you're still a student is whether you like Hollywood or don't like Hollywood. And for, you know, versus when you graduate, you tell your parents you're moving out, you pack up your car, you drive across the country, you know, you get here and you're like, oh man, I hate it here. It's a lot better to learn that when you're in college. And every year, a few people learn that they hate Hollywood, which is really good to learn before you get out of school. But for, I think for most people, it does change their life because I'd say the lion's share of the Vanderbilt students that we come across are kind of like me. Like I grew up in, in Dallas. My parents' friends were doctors and bankers and lawyers. There wasn't an entertainment guy in the bunch. Uh, I grew up as an athlete. I wasn't into theater. I didn't grow up with a camera in my hand. I came to Vanderbilt. I you know, drank a lot of beer. Um, and it was only after I just happened to wander into an opportunity to be exposed to the business that suddenly this light bulb went off in my head where I was like, oh, this is why I haven't wanted to get a job because I think this is what I was meant to do. And so what we try to do is kind of create that light bulb moment for students while they're still in school. Um, but in the early years of this, you know, nobody, no employers wanted a Vanderbilt student. They didn't really know, Vanderbilt didn't have a presence out here. There weren't that many of us at all. Um, and whoever came out here just kind of happened to come out on their own. Uh, and there was no network that connected us all. And so Chad and I were calling employers trying to get Vanderbilt students internships and they'd be like, no, sorry, I want a kid from USC who kind of understands the ropes. And, you know, we just started shoving Vanderbilt students down their throats. Now, as Chad pointed out, like it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. People are now coming to us saying, man, I love that program. I love my Vanderbilt intern that I had last summer. 
he or she was just a rock star, put me at the top of the list, I want another one. And those opportunities don't exist for most people because Hollywood is a who you know town, not necessarily a what you know town. And so uh, many Vanderbilt students just don't have those relationships to, you know, to, to be exposed to those types of opportunities. And they don't necessarily, I mean, some of the bigger companies might advertise an internship, but for the most part, you know, I'd say 80 to 90% of the companies out here don't advertise an internship. So it's not like something you could, you could find on just doing a Google search. Um, so I do think that we kind of create those opportunities and every year it turns out what's really cool about it is every year it turns out there's always one or two students that says like, I want something really specific and you're not currently offering it and we go find it. You know, a couple of years ago, there was someone that really wanted to be involved in, uh, in music soundtracks for TV shows and we weren't offering anything related to that. So we went and found it and, you know, now we can place somebody at that music soundtrack company, you know, um, going forward. So I do think it's a really cool opportunity that not everybody gets. And, and then when you come out here and, and obviously this year, it's going to be a little bit different because of the virtual nature of things. But, you know, when you come out here, we can support your internship and you with kind of all this infrastructure that we've built up over the years. So we do a Q and a that, you know, uh, is on Wednesday nights. It's usually at my office. I usually order pizza. Um, and we all kind of sit around and, and do a Q and a with a speaker from the industry in the early days, that was a non alum now for the last, probably what Chad, five or six years, it's been all alums, which is so cool because with this program, having placed probably 30 Vanderbilt students every summer, give or take, uh, that's a lot of people that have shown up in Hollywood after they've graduated to create this network. And I'd say probably half of those people got their first jobs through their internship at Vandy in Hollywood. Um, so we do the Q and A every Wednesday night. We have a little mentor program where we pair you up with an alumni mentor. Uh, we, you know, if you guys were here this summer, we would send you off to red carpet movie premieres and studio tours and all kinds of cool events like that. Um, so we're going to do our best to support that in the same way this year. So we're going to have a, uh, a virtual Q and A session every week. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'll have to buy your own pizza, but I'm sure you can figure that out. And um, it's an opportunity for you to get some one-on-one -on -one relationships and Q&A time uh, and FaceTime with some of those alumni that are working in the business. And so that too is a really special opportunity that not everybody gets. So um, anyway, all in all, I think it's a really, a really special package that, uh, that, that Grace and her friends, at the Career Center really, uh, really empower. Absolutely. So not only is it the internship, where you're gaining the experience, but the speaker series and the access to your peers and alumni, um, really great program. Could you, let, let's move on to kind of the application piece and let's talk about who can apply and what makes a good application. Sure, so uh, Chad, you wanna talk about the, the who can apply part? I know you guys were having some discussion about that. Earlier. Yeah, so so the the program is basically well. First of all, even to step back from the program, um, most employers in Hollywood, when hiring their interns, will only hire an enrolled college student who is getting class credit. Um, so unfortunately, that means um, they won't usually hire somebody who is has already graduated, a senior who is out of school and can't get college credit. Um, so the program is is first and foremost open to current and enrolled Vanderbilt students. And if you are, are there any seniors on this call even? Is anyone here a senior about to finish? Okay, perfect. Um, I know we're recording this, so I'll come back and talk about seniors in just a moment. But um, First and foremost, you have to be an enrolled Vanderbilt student. Now, a lot of employers out here also, for better or worse, um, they won't take freshmen. They won't take rising sophomores. They want students with, honestly, with just more experience and maturity. Um, so, so for the most part, we say you've got to be a sophomore or a junior. Now, having said that, on rare, and I mean rare occasions, we have accepted freshmen, rising sophomores. Um, can we talk specifically about those people, Grace? Sure. So last, well, I guess not last year, but the year before, there was a student, Sarah Baldino, who was a freshman 
And she applied. And I remember having a phone call with her saying, listen, we don't really take freshmen. And I talked to her on the phone and she was so poised and articulate and mature and intelligent and fantastic. I was like, all right, you know what? I'll see what we can do. And she ended up, we accepted her and she ended up coming out. And I think she actually had two internships that year. And I, I, I'm not going to lie. She was a fucking rock star. Like she just hit it out of the park. Um, and I still keep in touch with Sarah and we talk every few weeks or months and she is fantastic and coming out again, I hope this summer. Um, but the Sarah Baldinos honestly um, are few and far between. Um, and so what we usually tell freshmen is know that most employers won't accept people until they're at least sophomores. And that makes it really tough for us to place you. So if you want to apply, apply, uh, send in your application. Um, we will need to prioritize upperclassmen. Um, but if you just crush your application, that definitely helps your cause. Um, now, just to circle back to um, seniors for a quick second. I know there are no seniors on this call, but if you are a senior and you want an internship, what we usually recommend people do is in order to get an internship, all you have to do is get college credit, which means you just have to be enrolled somewhere. And so we've had many graduated seniors who just enroll themselves in a community college. It doesn't even have to be a community college in California, although it can be. There's like Santa Monica College out here and Pasadena City College. Um, but a few years ago, we had a senior do this and she just enrolled in her hometown community college in Oklahoma it kind of sucks because that means you're then paying just in order to get the college credit. But you can usually at a community college just enroll in like a one credit entertainment, entertain uh, one credit internship course for like 75 or a hundred bucks. And then you're covered and you're getting college credit and you become employable as an intern again. So if you're about to be a graduate, um, I would recommend looking into that. And then what I would also say to you is, um, come back to us and we will do our best to help you. Um, you won't go through the normal Vandy and Hollywood program because that's reserved for enrolled students. Um, but we always try to help alumni, whether that's somebody who graduated a week ago or somebody who graduated 10 years ago, that's what the Vandy and Hollywood network is for. So it's a little more of an informal process if you're a graduate, but if you can enroll yourself in a, in a college or figure out some way to get class credit, then we are more than happy to help you. The other option, um, if you are about to graduate and we have had a couple people do this, is let's say you're about to graduate in May, but you really wanna do a Vandy and Hollywood internship this summer, um, don't graduate. A few years ago, we had a student, Sam Miller, who is now out here working as a television writer. And when he was at Vanderbilt, he wanted a Vandy and Hollywood internship, but he was about to graduate. So he, I don't know exactly what channels he did to do this. I can't tell you how to navigate it exactly, but somebody there can help you. He just deferred his graduation until fall. And so he was officially a Vandy student for the summer and went through the Vandy and Hollywood program like everybody else. And then uh, I, I don't know if he took classes in the fall or just blew it off and, and got his diploma in the winter. I don't know how it worked, but that is another option if you're about to graduate and you really want to do an internship, just don't graduate. Um, Rich, do you want to talk a little bit about what makes a great application? Yeah, sure. So um, I think it's important to note on the application that there's no expectation that you have any experience in the entertainment business. Uh, we might ask about that. But, uh, and, and because some people do have some experience uh, and that experience can look like a bunch of stuff. You know, in some cases we've had students that have just like had their own YouTube channel and, you know, they're always making stuff and posting videos and whatever, or people that are, you know, into other platforms like Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Um, I think that counts as experience. Uh, we've had students that have had internships in prior summers. We've had students that come from entertainment families. We have students that uh, you know, we're really involved in their, you know, school television or theater in high school. So experience can mean a whole lot of different things. Um, it can also just mean sitting around, you know, writing in your free time, or it can mean no experience at all. You're, you know, at, at your, where you are in, in life, like we don't have any expectation that you would have any, uh, prior experience. So that's surely not a requirement. Um, I think it is important though, 
to think about uh, a couple key questions in your application and then try to be specific in some of those. So those questions are things like, what are your favorite movies and TV shows? Which sounds kind of like broad and it is, but it turns out that that's actually one of the ways that we can get the most guidance about you when it comes to placing you into an internship that's gonna be most productive for you. So for instance, like, like I love, you know, early in my career, I sort of established myself as a guy that makes teenage movies. Uh, one of the first movies I made was the high school movie, She's All That. Um, it did well enough that everyone in Hollywood was like, okay, this is what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. You're gonna make high school movies, which is cool. It pays the bills, but, uh, but man, I've made a bunch of them. Um, so for me going to work at a company, but, but I love those movies. I grew up on those kinds of movies. They really speak to me. I know how to develop those. I like reading those scripts. I mean, I love sports movies. I love action movies. I love all kinds of other stuff, but I also have a really soft spot in, in my heart for movies that sort of define kind of the high school and college experience. Um, and so me going to work at a company that does that would be a super natural fit and I would have a great experience. On the other hand, I hate sci-fi. My wife loves it. I hate it. Like if I had to go and sit in a room and read sci-fi scripts all day long, like, uh, you know, I'd jump out a window. It is just awful for me. I don't get the genre. I wouldn't know how to develop that kind of material. So I think that answering that question about what your favorite movies and TV shows are with some specificity gives us a lot to go on, given that you may not have a ton of experience. I think the other question that's important to think about is the idea of well, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think that at your age, you don't have to know the answer to that question, but I think it's great if you kind of have uh, a starting point. I think there's nothing worse for us than students that show up and say, well, I can do anything. Just throw me in. I'm a really great learner and I can adapt anywhere, but that's cool and it may be true, but it doesn't really give us anything to go on. It's okay to be wrong. And so it's a lot better if you come and say, look, I want to be, I, you know, I love half hour comedies. I want to be a, you know, a half hour comedy writer when I grow up, you know, so try to find me an internship around that. And then usually we do. And then they may realize the intern may realize like, oh, this is not really what I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to try to pivot to something else. But simply the act of going through that internship teaches you a lot. And so you can bounce around, you know, I mean, I've been out of college for a long time. I reinvent my career like every five years. So uh, you guys can surely reinvent what you want to be when you grow up as well. But I think it's important in the application to try to talk about what it is that you think you want to do with some specificity. So if you can kind of tackle those two things, what you want to do and kind of what your favorite movies and TV shows are, uh, I think that'll give us a lot to go on in your application. Chad, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, one thing I did want to add, because Rich is exactly right, that I don't think anybody is expecting you to have, nobody's expecting you to have tons of life experience or world experience, you know, making movies or in the professional world. However, on the flip side, what you should also embrace if you have it is actual real world employment experience. Um, even maybe especially if it's not entertainment related. Um, I cannot tell you how many employers I talked to who, well, a perfect example is a couple of years ago um, when we were getting, getting the, that summer's program going, I was having a conversation with a woman I knew who was in HR at CAA. Do you guys know what CAA is? Okay, so just for anyone who does, so CAA is like one of the biggest, most powerful talent agencies in the world. And I was talking to their HR person um, about setting up some internships there and what she wanted to see from applicants and students. And one of the things she said to me that I have heard repeatedly is she's like, listen, we, we don't care if about these students' student films. Like, I don't care if they've made a hundred student films. That is not helpful to us. There has never been a student film in the history of student films that is any good. They're all terrible. That tells us nothing about the student. She said, what I want to see on their resume, what makes me want to hire someone is real world employment experience. Um, have they worked at Subway? Have they, did they spend the summer at a, uh, you know, as a counselor at a summer camp? Did they work in their dad's hardware store? Um, she was like, any real world experience is valuable to me because what that tells me is they know how to show up on time. They know how to um, handle tasks that they've been assigned responsibly. They know how to talk to a boss. Um, she said they're going to be talking on a phone a lot, covering desks, talking to clients. She's like, 
if they work the cash register at a drugstore, I know that they know how to interface with customers. She's like, those skills are what we look for. Now that doesn't mean like Rich was saying, if you posted a, you know, if you have your own YouTube channel or if you've made shorts, that that's not valuable. But I feel like every year we get a lot of resumes and applications from students that have no real world experience on it at all. And it's really, I think that's a turnoff to a lot of employers. And then when I talk to those students, they're like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I worked at a grocery store one year, or I, I used to be a waiter. And it's like, well, then yes, put that on there. Because even though that doesn't seem sexy in the world, you know, it, 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 like, like working at a talent agency, or even though it doesn't seem like it applies to entertainment, what it does is it says, I know how to be a mature, responsible employee. Um, and that is just as important, if not more important than the other creative type stuff. That's great, thank you. Um, because Chad mentioned a little bit earlier the topic of academic credit, I'm about to put a link in the chat box and it kind of goes into what academic credit means and also that Vanderbilt offers this summer internship subsidy. So if you, do, because so many internships are unpaid in Hollywood, um, they require you to get this academic credit. So instead of paying for like, you know, a $3,000 Vanderbilt one credit course, the internship subsidy allows you to pay more around 300. And you do that by working with your Dean's office. And there are a few steps involved, but it's really worth it um, in my opinion. So I'm gonna add that link. And that's something that you can always come to the Career Center about as well, if you have questions about that. Um, so if I am a student and I'm applying to Vandy and Hollywood, can I keep applying to other internships? And, and will you kind of talk about that process and how important communication is? Chad, you want to take the first run at this? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll handle it. Uh, go for it. Yeah. I, look, I, I think, I think that, uh, that, that, this is a question we deal with uh, every year uh, for a couple of reasons. One of which is that uh, Vanderbilt gets out as well as a lot of schools that are, you know, not on the West Coast. They Vanderbilt gets out a little bit earlier than some of the other schools, particularly the ones in California. And so a lot of the internships don't actually get, a lot, a lot of the employers don't actually start filling their internships till kind of late in the game by Vanderbilt standards. And so that can kind of, like freak out Vanderbilt students sometimes, and more importantly, freak out their parents. Because they're like, what are you gonna do this summer? I need some definition. And so, and that's okay, we, we totally get that. So we do our best to kind of manage that by staying in close communication with you guys. Um, and, but we then sort of ask you to just do the same with us. So that if you're going out and applying for other internships through other programs or directly on your own, um, that's totally fine because we know that everybody wants to have some definition for the summer, but we ask you to kind of keep us included in that uh, conversation keep us updated on that because one of the things that ends up being sort of a, a black eye on the program is when we place a student and then they come back and they say, oh, you know what, I just took an internship somewhere else. Um, or if they go through several rounds of interviews with the employer directly and then they say, oh, sorry, I took something else. It's a lot better to be just straight up about it to say, hey, I've put in some applications a few other places. You know, this is my first choice. So if I get it, I'll definitely, you know, I'll definitely do it. I have an interest in, you know, kind of learning more about Hollywood, potentially having a career in that business. Um, and so uh, I think that's really what we ask. It's just that that kind of back and forth. And, and, and we do our best to try to, you know, hold up our end of the bargain with you guys too, by giving you some visibility into who we're talking to on your behalf. Um, and I think it's important to kind of understand part of that process too. So I think generally what you do is you make your application that goes into Grace's office and then that kind of gets evaluated by Grace and her team, me and Chad and a whole team of other Vanderbilt alums that are working in the business. Um, and then ultimately we'll try to make some decisions about where we think you might be happiest. And we'll probably narrow that down to two or three different choices. And then we'll start reaching out to those people and try to play matchmaker. So once you kind of get past the first hurdle, then you're going to go and have a conversation with the potential employer. And they're going to be in a position where they, they might say, you're not the right fit or you're perfect. Um, 
you know, I think, uh, I, I think that process is actually going to be a little bit easier this year because everybody, you know, like the world has just gotten a little bit more used to, you know, Zoom calls and video calls and that kind of stuff than I think they have been in years past. So uh, there was often kind of a lot of uh, multiple rounds of interviews, I think that a lot of employers would do because they were just talking to somebody over the phone. They couldn't lay eyes on them. They didn't really get a sense for them. It was just kind of voice to voice. And, and so they, I think they relied on us a lot for our guidance around who was the right fit. Whereas this year, I think you guys are in a position to kind of, you know, show up at those Zoom interviews with the employers and really just shine on your own. And I think, I think it's going to be a lot easier uh, this year, but, but, you know, ultimately um, it's about, I think that back and forth communication and Chad, do you agree with all that? Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's right. Um, Grace, can I, should I talk for a few minutes about how we submit students and all that? Yes, absolutely. That was my next question. So just so you guys know kind of like how the process works and the process is a little bit loosey goosey um, and it's going to be probably weirder this year. Um, and we're also going to be kind of honestly figuring it out as we go along this year, like the whole world is figuring everything out as they go along. Um, but the way it traditionally works. So one of the things that makes the Vandy and Hollywood program really strong, I think, is not only that we are using alumni collection, connections and personal relationships, but that also, for the most part, when we are recommending a student, you know, we'll have a company say to us, listen, um, we will hold one spot for a student, send us your top two candidates. Or sometimes a company will say, or a connection we have will say, give me your three best candidates. And we have to make that evaluation. And very often we have more than three people who've applied for those positions. So we got to decide who are the, what are the three strongest applications going in here? Um, and we send over just those three students. If four or five or six students have applied and they all want it, we still only send three because if we send more than that, A, it puts too much work on the employer and it also, um, you know, we don't want to burn that relationship. If the relationship has said, send us your three best, we're going to send them the three best. And sometimes they say, send us your one best. And so we have to make that call. Now, how exactly we decide who that, those one or two or three best people are, there's a couple different ways. Sometimes it's just evaluating the application. Um, but other times, just so you guys know, on your application, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what's on the application, but it will ask you to list maybe like your three top companies or your three top buckets, like, oh, I wanna be in production or agency or whatever. So let, let's say, um, okay, I'm gonna take a quick step back here in the, in, the, in the process. Once you guys all send in your applications, the way it then works is Rich and I and other alums start reaching out to companies in Hollywood saying, hey, do you have anything available? And those companies send us back like a little blurb about the internships they have available and the company and what they want to see in an application. I then just email it out to all of you. I just send out an e-blast to all of you and it says, hey guys, um, uh, Paradigm Agency is looking for two interns in their music department. Um, here's a little bit about the internship. Here's what you need to do to apply. And the deadline is, you know, next Friday at 12 p.m. The next Friday at 12 p.m., I've got all the applications. And let's say there are, there are six applications, right? And Paradigm has said, send me your best three. We go through those applications. We send over to Paradigm the best three. We send Brianna, Rachel, and Taylor. Let's say I also send out a blast that says, um, imagine a production company is also looking for, um, for interns. Here's what they need. Here's when they need to apply. The deadline is Saturday at 12 p.m. So everybody sends in their applications. And I'm going to send them on Saturday over to Imagine. Well, I know that Brianna and Rachel and Taylor have just gone to Paradigm. And so even though they might have really strong applications, I'm probably, we'll probably send different students to Imagine. 
um, because our goal is to get as many internships for as many students as possible. And so what we try to do is just make sure that everybody is having equal opportunities. And if Taylor and Rachel and Brianna just went into one place, we'll let other students go ahead of them the next round. Um, so I, I let you guys know that now because every year students are like, well, I, want, I, I like this one more than this one that I already applied for. And it's like, I'm sorry, we don't know when we're gonna get internship opportunities available to us. I send them out as soon as I get them. Different places have different requirements and different deadlines. And we just kind of send, have, to, have to manage that. Um, so that's just kind of a glimpse behind the curtain as to how the submission process works. Did that make sense? I feel like that was a little rambly in there. No, it does. It was a great example, Chad. And I, I think it's important for the applicants to know that this program does require flexibility and you have to be comfortable with, with being in a state of ambiguity for a little bit. That's just how this industry works. Yeah. And, and also just to add one more thing, you guys, if you get an internship offer, um, for, for the most part in Hollywood, and this sounds like a little bit batshit, but I think it's just kind of like the way when you apply for an internship and Rich touched on this, when you apply for an internship, for the most part, the, it, the company takes that as kind of a tacit acceptance of the internship should it be offered to you. And so they get really upset when they offer you an internship, like Rich said, and then you're like, nah, I don't want it. Um, and so we kind of operate the same way. So like if, you know, if, if, um, Hamilton is offered an internship that he gets through Vandy and Hollywood and then turns it down. The company's pissed. And also we're, we're like, well, we're not going to submit you for more stuff and have you risk um, turning it down. Because when you turn down an internship, it doesn't just annoy the company, but it actually loses that spot for another student. Like if Hamilton gets offered an internship at say uh, UTA and turns it down, it makes it almost impossible for Rich or I or another alumni to then say to the UTA, um, to the employers at UTA, all right, look, I know Hamilton turned you down, but we've got this other guy, Gavin, who's fantastic. Take him, you'll love him. Once an internship has been turned down, it blows it for all the other Vandy students. Um, so as we're submitting and placing people, we're assuming that if you are saying I'm interested in this, it means if you get offered it, you want it. Even if the day after you apply for it, you see an e-blast from me that looks more exciting to you. Great. Thank you both. So I do want to get to some student questions. Um, but the, the final thing I want you all to both touch on is what does it take to make it in Hollywood? Um, like what, what the grit and the passion and all that goes into it, what are the soft skills that go into this? I, I think, um, well, I'll, I guess I'll answer that this way. I, I feel like all of, when I think back on all the jobs I've had, over my career, all the shows that I've worked on, the ones that were the best were not the ones that were necessarily the, you know, the best show, the most watched show, the most acclaimed show. Um, they weren't the ones where I was doing the coolest work or getting to write the most exciting stuff. The jobs that I think are always the best are the ones where you're working with people you love the most. Um, and I've worked on, believe me, some of the shittiest shows you have never heard of. But I look at those jobs, I think back on them just as they were so much fun and so good because I loved the people I worked with. And when I left those jobs, those people that I worked with then hired me for other jobs and I hired them for other jobs and we helped each other out down the road. And so I guess I say that because So much of your career is just based on forming relationships and being somebody that other people want to hang out with, which doesn't mean you don't have to work hard and write your best and always bring your A game, you do. Um, but Hollywood, like Rich was saying, is also an entire industry of 
who you know and who your relationships are. So I think the most important skill is just knowing how to be a good people person and n- nurture your relationships and nurture your friendships. Yeah, I think it's like anything else. You get out of it what you put into it. So, you know, if you're glued to your phone all day and really not interacting, then you're not going to get a whole lot out of it. Ultimately, your job is to build trust with the people that you work with because those are the people that are going to get you your first job when you get out of school, whether that be at that company or with one of their friends at another company. But they're the ones that are going to vouch for you. So if you really kind of prove yourself to be a rock star without being annoying in the process, I think you're going to get a ton of benefit out of this. And that's really the biggest skill set is just to, you know, kind of, as Chad said, be someone that people like, people want to be around, people want to work with. Awesome. Thank you. So um, I'm going to put two more things in the chat box for all of you. The first one is um, a resource page from the Career Center's website about entertainment and media. And you might find some of the resources on this page helpful as you're filling out your application. The second link is our Vanderbilt Career Insights page on LinkedIn. So one thing I want you all to do as you're filling out your application and then thinking about this summer is go onto this alumni page on LinkedIn and look at our alumni and entertainment and the companies that they're at and what they're doing and how long they've been there. Like get a sense of where our people are at. So I will add this to the chat box. And for anyone who's watching this as a recording, I will add that on the same announcement. So you'll have all the URLs as well. Um, okay, so which question, what questions do you all have? Hey, Grace, can I say one quick thing really fast? Yes. You guys also, even though you'll hopefully be applying to internships through us in Van Dien Hollywood, um, sometimes students, and this could be you or like your roommate or your friend, sometimes students get Hollywood internships on their own just because you're looking or you don't know about the program or whatever. If you get a Hollywood internship on your own, let us know. We still love to include those students in the program and we'll hook you up with a mentor and with, um, uh, be part of the speaker series. So, so, so don't think that the only way to be part of those activities is that you have to go through the Vandy in Hollywood program. We love to wrap our arms around students who have, who have gotten to Hollywood in other ways. Figuratively, not literally. (laughs) All right, any, uh, any questions that anybody has that we haven't covered? Okay. Hi, I was just curious um, for the internships offered this summer. I know um, just by my own search that some of them are virtual, some of them are half, some of them are in person. So should we expect that our internship this summer if we do apply would be virtual? Well, I think, Grace, isn't the university saying only virtual? Yeah, so Vanderbilt, just as an institution, is um, telling the Career Center that our sponsored programs are to be virtual um, to help stop the spread of COVID, as well as just to maintain you all safety. Um, so, so the internships that we'll be putting forth are going to be virtual. I, I will say, I feel like the good news about that is that also means you can have a Vandy and Hollywood internship that's in entertainment anywhere. Um, You know, if you happen to get an internship at an agency in Nashville or in New York or a production company in Atlanta, whatever, like it's still welcome to the party. Like we'd love to, that that's as much a part of Andy and Hollywood as, you know, if Abigail lands an internship in Los Angeles. Yeah, because our support will be virtual this year. So, uh, and then that's always been one of the gating factors in the past is that if you got that internship in Atlanta or New York or whatever, we'd love to support you, but just physically you're not in our space, you know? And so now you can do it from anywhere. So it'll be an interesting experiment to see how it all works. But um, but I do agree with Chad that it kind of opens the aperture to uh, particularly internships that you might get on your own and your ability to then participate in kind of all the support that we provide during the summer. Anybody else, Chad? Yeah, can I ask? Hi, I'm Chet. Um, I was wondering, like, what percentage of your guys' job would you say is like purely creative, and like how much how much of the internships that Bending Hollywood students are doing do they get to exercise like their creative side? 
I'd say most people that come to us have some interest in getting into the creative side of the business. Many of them don't quite know what that means. Uh, and many of them don't quite realize that there's a whole bunch of jobs beyond just writer. Um, and there are, right? So there's surely the more traditional creative jobs like writer, director, producer, actor, that kind of stuff. Then there's also the creative jobs related to um, you know, sort of the companies that produce all these things. So development executive, that kind of stuff. But then there's what's all these the other jobs. Mean, Rich? Rich, what's that? development executive mean? Development executive is, is the executive executives at each of these companies that work with writers and producers to develop stories. So that means, you know, taking an idea and turning it into a script, taking a script, turning it into a better script, helping to package those movies with actors and directors, you know, other writers, producers, you name it, whatever needs to sort of get included to push that forward to production. That's really what development is. It's developing the package that's ready to go into production. But then there's also marketing jobs and distribution jobs and finance jobs and strategy jobs. And, you know, there's um, jobs working on sets that are like physical labor. There's, you know, there's, there's everything. If you think about it, there's millions of people that work in the business and, uh, and, and some of those would be like what your parents would consider like a normal job. You know, others are kind of what your parents might consider like a wacky job. Um, but there's a lot of jobs for a lot of people. Um, and, uh, uh, so anyway, so, so th there's, there's that, um, Chad, do you have stuff to add there? I thought that was good. Did that answer that Chad? Yeah, totally. That answer. I mean, I guess I just don't know, like in general, how creative or like industrial the industry is. Yeah, well, look, I, I'd say most of the students that come to us, like I said, they want some create, they think they want some creative element, right? Um, it's, you know, we often have Owen students from the, you know, Owen MBA program come to us a couple times a year. And we have a tough time placing those students because most of our internships have some creative bent to them. Uh, and they usually revolve around story, right? Story meaning, you know, what is the story of a movie or TV show? Whereas Owen students, they tend to want, you know, uh, kind of a graduate level finance focused internship where they're building spreadsheets and models and they have a very rigorous program, um, like what you would get on Wall Street. Whereas most of our programs are not really even programs at all. They are, hey, we're a company, we're going to allow an intern to kind of come behind the velvet rope, be part of the process. Sometimes they might just be getting coffee. Sometimes they might be doing nothing. Sometimes they might be, you know, reading scripts. Other times, you know, if we like what they say about those scripts, we're going to invite them into our development meetings. If we, if we, if, if they can do that and, you know, and, and be kind of a, uh, a good colleague, then we might ask them what they feel uh, or what they, what they think of a particular script in that development meeting. Um, and so, that's the process of just getting more and more ingrained in the creative process. And most of our internships are, are like that. It's why I said earlier, it's you kind of get out of it what you put into it um, versus a very structured program like you would have on Wall Street where it's like, okay, by the end of the summer, you're going to have built a financial model that does X. That's not what this is. This is far more, you know, sort of creative base, um, at least in our experience. Like I said, there's always there's always a little outlier on the graph here or there every summer. Somebody that might want to get into music, although that's surely creative, uh, or somebody that might want to get into, uh, you know, marketing or distribution or something like that. But I'd say for, you know, 90% of the internships that we organically offer, they're uh, pretty heavily focused on the creative departments. Also, just um, related to that a little bit, you guys, is... I think every year students get excited about applying to some of the really big, sexy companies like Disney or HBO, these giant places where we have alumni and relationships. Um, and those companies are great and their internships, internship programs are often great, but um, do not, do not, do not do yourself the disservice of dismissing and writing off the smaller companies, even the tiny companies that you haven't heard of. Um, because a lot of times with those smaller companies, even if that company is only one or two people, when you're an intern at those companies, you're, you're working much more closely 
with the high level people and you're allowed to do much more on the ground creative stuff. So if you wanna be in meetings, I mean, this year it'll be Zoom meetings, but if you wanna be in meetings with writers and directors and producers, if you wanna be reading scripts, if you wanna have the opportunity to actually talk about what's happening with the executives who are doing it, you've got a much better chance of getting those opportunities at a smaller, more intimate company than you do at a giant corporation where you're just the tiniest of tiny cogs in a wheel, in a machine. And I would also add on those small companies, like do your legwork on them. So when you see the list that we publish for the internships that we're offering this summer, when you see companies whose names you don't recognize, just hop online and do a quick Google search, figure out what kinds of shows and movies those companies have made in the past. Um, Because it'll give you a sense for whether you think you might fit in particularly well or not well with them. Also, if you didn't get an opportunity to do an interview with them, And you show up and the first thing out of your mouth is like, oh, I've always loved your movie, blah, blah, blah. That really makes people feel good. That's a great way to kind of start off the process because it tells them that you've done your homework on them, which is important. Anybody else? Hi, Maxwell. Sorry. Okay, Taylor, go ahead. Go ahead, Maxwell, I'm fine. Oh, thank you. Um, I was just wondering, um, since everything is remote um, this summer, is there, like looking at the application, we have to select um, one or two categories that we're interested in. Are there any um, specific categories that, you know, might hinder us or might make it less likely for us to get an internship because it is online? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Not really. Um, I don't think so, Maxwell. Yeah, to be honest, there, there may be some companies who say, who norm, in fact, I got an email last night from a company where we usually place interns and she said, hey, I'm really sorry. We don't have interns right now because everything's virtual and I don't know if we will this summer. We, we might not till next year. So there may be companies that just aren't doing it at all. Um, there are also companies I know that um, have way more interns than they usually do because it's virtual and they're like, hey, we don't have to have people, you know, we don't have limited desk space, so we can have more interns than we usually do. But, but I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think by choosing A over B, you're limiting yourself. Taylor. All right. My question was, what do you, what do y'all think is the most challenging thing for maybe a Vanderbilt student to get into once they get to their intern position? Like, is there something that you often hear about interns that when they're adapting their positions, or something that we could kind of account for now? Um, well, I think, I think at the end of the day, there's not a lot you can do now uh, to, um, you know, short of doing some research on the companies that we, that we post, uh, doing some research on your own companies, um, you know, um, and seeing kind of what's out there. I mean, again, this is a new world we're living in this summer. And so it's possible that companies that may not have traditionally posted any type of like job listing for their internship programs are going to be doing that this year as a way to sort of like open the aperture of applicants. So, um, uh, you know, I, I would, you could surely spend some time doing that. The other thing you can do, and I always tell people this and sometimes people think it's weird, but you know, watch a lot of TV, watch a lot of movies. One of the things that, like I said, people want to hear from you when you go in these interviews uh, is at the employers is, you know, tell me about your favorite movies and TV shows. And they want to hear that you have a perspective on those. So if you say like, oh, I don't know what I've seen recently. Uh, But whereas if you come out of the gate and you're like, yeah, here's what I saw. I love, you know, I, I watch Bridgerton. I love it. Here's the reason why I blah, 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 blah. And you've got a real perspective on that. Even if it turns out to be a little bit BS, you know, like, but the idea that you've taken the time to develop a perspective on, 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 on something, I mean, this is what we do for a living. So while watching movies and TV show is kind of like what you guys might do for recreation, it's what we do for vocation. Mm-hmm. So like, that's our job. So what you're doing is you're giving me a perspective about my job. And that's important. That's what the employers want to hear. Um, so I think that's something that you can kind of kind of do in the meantime. And, and in fact, one of the things that makes some of the best interns I've ever had have been ones that introduce me 
to cool new shows that I've never even heard of. I mean, think about how much TV is being produced today. Nobody in there, you know, can possibly keep up with it all. And, and I do a pretty good job. So when those interns show up and they've got a really cool show that I've never heard of, um, like, uh, uh, like, actually Chad was the second person I ever heard talk about Fleabag. The first person was one of my interns. It was like, oh, there's this cool show. You've got to see it. It's Fleabag. And they like pitched me on it. And I went and checked it out. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Right? When an intern does that, it's really cool. So finding those shows right now while you're sort of prepping for the interviews, I think that's something you can surely do now. Thank you. Just, hey, can I just to tag on to that really quickly? Um, this isn't necessarily something you can be doing right now, but, um, and I'm sure you've heard versions of this before. Once you're in the internship, you know, most of the stuff, a lot of the stuff you'll be asked to do during the internship. And this is true also when you come out here and you start your, hold on one second, I'm gonna shut the door, hold on. Um, this'll, this'll be true once you're out here and you're starting your life as an assistant also, because almost all of you, when you begin your careers, you're gonna begin as an assistant. Um, but most of the tasks you'll be given aren't ta you know, they're tasks that like a monkey can do, right? Like you're gonna be answering phones, keeping a schedule. You have to read scripts and do coverage, but it's not something that requires Albert Einstein. So most of what is gonna get you noticed and help you move up the ladder and get bigger tasks and better tasks is simply like your attitude and your work ethic and being willing to like do anything and do it with enthusiasm. Um, and sometimes interns I feel like are like, ugh, I'm, and I know this won't be this summer because we're not in person, but like interns are always like, ugh, I'm just getting coffee. I'm just making copies. All I ever do is my boss asks me to, do her receipts for expenses. And I feel like those are great jobs because every time you're given one of those jobs, it's just an opportunity to prove your competence and to further a relationship with the per person who asked you to do it. And that's why you're interning this summer is to build relationships and network and build your Rolodex. It's not to come out and learn a specifically unique set of skills because there is no unique set of skills. I mean, yeah, you've got to be able to read, you've got to think critically, and you've got to be creative, but those are things you can develop anywhere, anytime. The real gold in an internship is the relationships and understanding how to network and use them and build them. And that really just comes down to like your personality and your attitude and your enthusiasm. Makes sense. Thank you. So okay. Grace, Grace, I've got to hop off and jump on another call. Yeah, but, thanks, uh, Rich, so much. But great to see everybody. I hope we see applications from uh, from all of you guys and lots of your friends. It's it's always a great summer, and we hope that you'll you'll share it with us. Thank you so Bye, much, Rich. Rich and Chad. Um, you all, I just wanted. You need me to. Okay, I wanted to remind everybody that the Career Center has drop-in hours Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And they're all virtual, so very easy to drop in. That Zoom link is on Doorways. So if you log on to Doorways and you look at Career Center programs, you'll see um, spring drop-in hours. So as you're doing your resume, your cover letter, and your application, I, I really encourage you to go check out those drop-in hours. All of our career coaches are phenomenal in checking out um, those documents. I am also available by email if you have additional questions. So it's Chad, I see he just dropped his email in the chat box. Um, make sure your applications are, are really spectacular. Chad, any any other things or any, we if you can hang around just for maybe five more minutes, if yeah. there are any remaining questions that you all wanna ask, I, I understand if some of you have to start dropping off the call. The more questions you guys ask, the less real work I have to do. So feel free to keep me, Grace. Um, so I know the application is due technically midnight, March 12th, but is there any advantage to getting it in sooner or what do you re recommend in that sense? No, there, okay. there's not because the computer at Vandy just collects them all and then sends them to us once they're all collected. So it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. And then we are we're having, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll just, one more thing. Um, if we're applying to anything, 
like writing related, do you want like writing samples or any extra like supplementary things with the application? So it does ask for writing samples. Um, the writing samples, even if, do you want to be a writer? Mm -hmm. So, so there's, there's no internship that you're going to get this summer that lets you write like a script or a story or actually participate in that type of writing process. Mm -hmm. But there are internships that will get you close to that writing process, like at a production company or, um, you know, working with development executives where you're reading scripts that are coming in, um, whether those are drafts of movies or drafts of TV shows, you could be reading screenplays and writing coverage. Do you know what coverage is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that kind of thing. So the, the, the type of writing sample that's going to be most helpful to you or to us or employers isn't necessarily, hey, here's a story that I wrote or here's a script or a play, but is um, a writing sample that shows off your critical thinking and communication skills, like, uh, you know, like a, like a book report or an analysis of a play that you read, or even if you wrote for The Hustler and did movie reviews, you know, something, something like that, something that shows us how the clockworks inside your brain work. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's the kind of writing sample that is going to be best. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Ethan, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, um, I was wondering for the internship. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to like figure out how I could ask this in a question sort of way. But um, what what like what what are you looking for like in the application that would like really like separate an applicant from the rest? Ethan, I think you hopped on a little bit late. Um, we we were recording this okay. session and and Chad and Rich okay. talked a lot about that in the beginning. So this recording will be on doorways um, by tomorrow. Oh yeah, sweet. Um, I'll also do a small plug for our Instagram account. We're doing a Vandian Entertainment Instagram takeover March 10th, 11th, and 12th. And I've asked a lot of different students and employers and alumni to hop on just to talk a little bit about their job function and what it means to be a producer um, and things like that. So Chad mentioned Sarah Baldino earlier. She's, she's one of my students. She's going to be talking a little bit about her internships. And I've got some really cool cool people for that. So I encourage you all to watch that because the application is due on the 12th. So even if you're not completely done with your application at that time, some of these employers and alumni and students talking might, you know, spark some of your um, essay answers on the application. Hey, Grace, um, I know you said you post this on doorways. Can we post it on YouTube also? And I can send the link out that way in the knee blast. Yes. Okay, well, thank you everybody so much for attending. Chad, thank you for your time. Um, we'll just post this. I'll get this to you, Chad, and we'll go from there. Please email me if you all have any questions. Perfect. And you guys can email me too if you need anything for the 